problem is it as well. I got to match the cherry, the, the chairs. I don't do that, but I have friends who, so I took the chair and we got it matched, and that was the result. <clears throat> okay, um, I do I do quite a few things that some people might consider complicated, but I like doing simple stuff quite a bit. So this table on the left, I call it geometric table. It's uh, it's, it's just like it says, triangles, rectangles, and cylinders. It was really easy to do, and actually it was a lesson I was giving my, my college class. We had a big piece of paper, and I told them how we get started. And we get started, first we put the ground line down, measure up for the surface of the top, find a center line, and then we go from there. So, here is kind of, I drew this just a little while ago, and this is actually a half pattern, half scale, but when you, when you do a half pattern, you can then take a template off of that and just rock the template over and left side, right side would be identical. And you can use these patterns when you go buy lumber, you could put your leg patterns on lumber and position it and you'll, you can uh, line up the grain quite a bit and eliminate the waste. So that's, that's actually pretty important. Yes? I'm just curious, you did that, I don't know if you did that half scale just because that was the size paper you had or in your experience is it that if you've got like a half scale at that point you can get a feel for the design? You can get a really versus, good feel. You know, <coughs> you're, you're absolutely correct. You can get a really good feel with a half scale. And I knew I was going to talk to, to you guys, and la on Sunday I talked to Kraft, and it's easier to carry. And not in this uh, one, but I have lots of these with one table after the other. So it's a good way for me to store these, because when I show a client a design, I don't show them one design, I show them multiple designs. So a half scale works out pretty well. Occasionally, for some big stuff, you go to quarter scale. Yes. Okay, so it's half scale, not half a pattern. It, it's both. Oh, okay. That that could be confusing, right? <laughs> it's both. I I also uh, but, we'll we'll go to the next slide. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. But then if you but you can't take a half scale pattern. By no, one. but then I draw. Okay, okay. I, I draw the full pattern, but the same way. I draw half of it if it's a symmetric pattern. Yes? When you're doing the, uh, the half scale, um, how, how do you deal with the part in the middle? Because you can, I, I could see drawing a half pattern that looks nice, but then when we make the full pattern, it comes together in the middle in a way that you don't like. Um, well, it most of the time they come okay. But if, if there needs to be a little blending, you can take a French curve. Take a French curve and do that, um, but it, it does it does work out well. Violin makers live and die by their half patterns. Do you ever find that when you go to from half to full scale that suddenly the weight or the yes the, the, is sort of a little off yes or and when it's slimming it down yes uh, and even more so when you're sketching. So I do a lot of thumbnail sketches, but I have um, uh, to scale. Um, diagram underneath tracing paper because if you don't have that and, you've, and you're not that proficient at sketching, you sketch something, it looks nice and sleek and everything, but then when you put all the measurements together, it gets to be real boxy. And it's, gee, that's not how I designed that. But if you have something underneath there that keeps you in scale, and, and you uh, I, I did that with, with your group, I think, last time. You know, I asked not to, to go to different stuff. So, but that works for me, and that's what I use all the time. I go through a lot of tracing paper, rolls of tracing paper. And then I, I use uh, transfer paper after that. So <clears throat> what I was going to say, uh, and, uh, and this, sounds, this sounds really uh, obvious, right? Tables, to me, they're all about the legs. So if you break down a table, 
into its parts is basically a top held by legs, right? So we have we have different ways of making tops and certainly different ways of legs. And as if you notice my pieces, my legs, so I can do stuff like this where uh, this is just drawing a lot of leg ideas. So let's say I worked on this. It, it, I think I, I did this all in about 20 minutes, these legs, but I might do 15 legs. And then if I like some, uh, I'll, I'll, save, I'll save some. I save a lot of sketches. Okay, Peter. All right. Um, craftsmanship. I, I think we're all really in tune on craftsmanship. I think every time we go into the shop, we're doing something to try to improve craftsmanship. Right? I don't think there's anybody who would disagree with that. And, but why do we do it is because the more precise the craftsmanship is, the better the piece. So what, a lot of times what I'll, what I'll mention to a student, because most of the times, especially on the, the college student, believe it or not. I'll say, I, I, you know, give them, come in with ske thumbnail sketches of a small table, not bigger than this and not longer than that and stuff like that. And they design stuff that they can never really build well. So um, Patton, famous general, said, a plan's a plan when you know about 80% of it. Right? You don't necessarily have to know 100%, but you have to know something. Then you get people who talk about designing outside the box. Well, you've got to know what's in the box first. And a lot of times, if you concentrate on what's in the box, you can make these little uh, things that go out of the box. And this, quite honestly, was, again, I was another class I did the top, the base, and stuff, and I came up with this design, and uh, so that was probably the, the original piece, right, I cut it. So a full-size drawing like this, you can get all your parts going, all your parts, taking all your patterns. So Peter just held up this, and we're going to get to this a little later. We're going to put this table together. So, if you if you saw the the conference table, it was a lot like this, right? This style, because the first table I made like this, uh, the person bought and then wanted me to make the conference table like this. So, <coughs> what in, in a few minutes we're going to talk about this, we're going to set it up and you know, put it together. All right. I think I have the screws on this side. Alright, so we'll go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, when you were coming up with this design and you drew your initial sketches, were you thinking about the joinery at all or did you just actually like, want, like overlap here, overlap here? In, in this, yeah. in this, at the time I wasn't. But I, but I had all the proportions, and I started thinking about it, and it becomes a real um, puzzle. It's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting um, thing to put together. Very interesting. Uh, and, I, and I will go through that a bit. <laughs> All right. All right um, as you go, you, you start to develop a style. And a style is something that People can go into a, into a gallery and see a bunch of pieces and able to pick out your pieces without seeing the name on it. And a lot of people tell me they, they could do that. So when I think about my style, most of the time it has gentle curves. Even that other piece that I just showed you, it's all curves, but you're not really seeing them. Okay, so we'll... All right, cons construction. Um, Peter, if you can get the top of it here, we'll put up. And I'm, I'm going to ask somebody to just hold that for a second. 
And as you put it together, we'll talk about it. So, and if you have, okay, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. And we're going to go through some, some of this. And I know uh, you want to do some bench work, so we're going to do actually a little bench work. The, uh, <coughs> if you look, even though this looks very kind of geometric, it has a lot of gentle curves. So if you look on the sides, a lot of gentle curves all the way throughout. And I think what we're going to do first, can you see the bottom of the legs? See the bottom of the legs? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, and I should show you, the bottoms of my tables always have adjustment levelers. Because if you make it perfect, if you put it on the table saw plant and everything's perfect, nobody's, nobody's floor is perfect. <laughs> but if it's a rug, it's going to rock. So levelers go on actually pretty early. You have levelers, you can open up the leveler to put finish on. Right? You don't have to stick it on, on blocks. You already have your levelers. So that, that's one aspect. Another aspect. Even that for the website. And, uh, yeah, hold that. Do you, and if, and if, you, if, you aren't, if I'm not showing this, just Tell me, right? You see the, how this is very, very, very similar to this and how it goes together, right? You see on the inside, on this side and this side is really similar. This side and this side and this side is really similar. The same thing here and here. All right. So, One. Yes. When you say similar, you're talking about the shape grain, or the grain? Grain and color. Uh, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking for, it's got to be on the bottom, naturally. I thought are cheating. This is really the veneer that's on either side of that. It's, it's, it's walnut veneer on walnut. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do one, because I'm going to ask Peter to... Uh, uh, we're going to take a piece of walnut, right, and we're going to iron on a piece of veneer. Now, Iron on veneer, you can you can do easily with uh, uh, Typon original glue. You take a little Typon, mix it with a few drops of water, and we'll brush on. In fact, I'll probably let Peter brush on the glue. Uh, I have my glue here. I brought it, and you do the same thing with the veneer. However, if we put glue on this side, in a few minutes it will all curl up. All right. So what you do first is you put glue of uh, water, a little more than that. This is going to curl up. So you, you water it down on one side, and then spread your glue on the other side, right? And it stays pretty straight, right? Then once it's dry after about 20, 25 minutes, you simply take an iron 
and you just iron it on. Now, what most people do if they try this for the first time, they overheat it. All right. When the glue's dry, this is going to curl up, which is my example of what happens when you put the glue on both sides. But I'm going to ask Peter to put some glue on. Then you iron it, and, um, and then I take a block with sandpaper and sand it. And as I'm sanding it, I'm pressing down as it's cooling also. Then you do the other side, yes. Type on two and three work the same way, or just the original? I, you know, I haven't tried type on two or three, but I was going to show you one other product. This, this is called Heat Lock. It's sold by uh, Veneer Supplies, and it's really good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a little more expensive, but I've never had a problem with the with the type on. I did tables thirty years ago where I have sample stuff, you know, up in my attic, and, and I ironed on Macassar ebony veneer and stuff, on samples and test it and check it out and stuff. It's still as tight as can be. So the type line works well, this works very well. Hey, what do you set your iron at? Um, probably linen, linen, but it's probably not that, not all that important. And if, if one side is real dry, a lot of times I put a little more water on it and then I, I iron it. Yeah. Steam? <clears throat> steam or no steam? Stunction. No steam. I never, no I've stunction. never put water in an iron, so definitely no steam. Well, you put a little water on there, I just assumed it would make steam once you heat it enough. So yeah, but it might keep it too wet, it might swell it too much. Um, and to tell you the truth, first time I tried it was years ago. I was working in, in, a, in a really high-end cabinet shop. A person I really respect and I still know. He's, he's, a, he's a genius of stuff. And uh, there's Kelly. I said, how are we going to do that? He said, we're going to glue it on with the iron. I said, say, say what? <laughs> the reason I'm asking is, I get that. I get that. Uh, a piece of veneer, look at your fine little wire, right? Or more to shake it, just as I was making yeah. it. Yeah, a bigger piece. Years ago. And, and I had it on linen, and I had a little bit of scorching near the two pieces. Well, you could put some water on it uh, if you want. You just want it held in there too long. It's so. Yeah. When I put the iron on it, I used uh, successfully used a very short Yeah, that would work. Yeah, that would work. Um, no, but you want to keep the iron clean. Because if you have any perfect glue on it, you want to steal one of those. So, when I've done this, um, I, I, I read and I did it because that said it. I didn't know. Right. I, I used a piece of piece of a, a, a tape for it, and and uh, that, that kept the iron clean. And, and but you you don't you don't do that. No. Um, I made a little mock up here of a piece I'm going to show you. Uh, if you look over here, this piece is all iron on rolled up in here that I ebonized. It's just like this. So, started out on, on this facet, put a piece of veneer, and on this facet, then take a plane, plane it, and then you can put your other piece on. And so, we got this. Hmm. Do, does that process work well on a larger surface? I, as, as well I generally haven't tried it on a larger surface because I, I have a I have a vacuum press and, I, and I've done a lot of regular pressing. So the biggest I've tried, you'll see a table here at, towards the end, and because it was curved, I figured well, I'll iron it on, and I definitely use this stuff. That's why I first started using it. And you have to put it on really wet. What's that? Do you have to put it on really wet? I mean, a lot glue? of glue. A lot of glue. No. Not really wet, but not dry. 
Um, and on here it says if you get some really dry spots, you put a second coat. So you just have to wash it. How long do you let the glue set up before you iron it? Generally, it's around 20 minutes, but a lot depends on the heat of your shop and the humidity. But you know, it all glistens over. And we'll, we'll do it. Uh, I'll get people to do so it. So it's, it's not cured, it's just skinned over. What's that? The glue's not cured, it's just skinned over. No, it's pretty dry. It's pretty dry. When you put the veneer, it, it actually catches. So you, have to, you kind of want to put it where, where you want it. Doesn't mean it'll stay there, but it'll catch right there. But as you use the iron, you can force the iron one way because it's heating up the glue and moving the veneer a little bit. But naturally, that's something like this. You make the veneer piece a little bigger. Then you can just trim it. Glue I'm both sure glue both surfaces or just the veneer? Both surfaces, definitely. Okay. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. Both surfaces. It's kind of like doing formica. Yeah. Technique. Well, there's no real smell. And it's, uh, yeah, I, one thing that's color. important, you can do it when it's dry to the touch, but don't wait 24 hours because then it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's, I, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure you're correct. I've never waited 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of wild. I want to get stuff washing. going here. Yeah. Oh, and one more tip. Don't use your wife's iron go buy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> Actually, there's a Next better week, 47 years. There's a better trick that. to that. Buy her a brand new one and tell her how much you love her. <laughs> and then take the old one. And, and, and then suck. Actually, the that's exactly is. what I did. <laughs> 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 that's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 I want to point out a couple more design things. And before before I please stand it, the the front, the top, <coughs> that's, that's walnut veneer book match glued onto solid walnut. Walnut veneer book match. So, that's not bagged, it's just the same process? No, this was bagged. Okay. Oh, bagged, okay. Like I said, I've never tried really big yeah. surfaces. Did you veneer the edges also? Why does the top? Bottom. No, just the top and the bottom. Yeah, just the top and the bottom. Yeah. The veneer on the um, support pieces here. Is yeah. That, is it veneered on the end grain too? Or no. It, that's that's just that's natural. It's just here and here. Okay. And you veneer the bottom of that. Yeah. But a lot of times I don't veneer the bottom with really classy veneer. Like if we. Um, let's hold this up. This is this is the front side, obviously top side. But that's the veneer I put on the on the roof. What's that? That's sexy. You like that, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, just we're gonna. We're going to go back to this foot for a second. Let's, let's put this down there. Uh, where would be good? Maybe we should put it on the table. Maybe we should put it over here. All right. Or make sure the lock is set on this. All right. So. Oh, it's all right. From concept to completion. Um, the, the first one that I did probably took me about six weeks. It was made out of mosaic.